Hello, welcome and Namaskar. A new chapter in statistics and that is time series analysis. That is also a part of a chapter called business forecasting. And in time series analysis, we are starting with method of least squares. Broadly known as algebraic methods of fitting trends. Method of least squares and first we are going to learn about fitting linear trend. But first of all, what is time series analysis? As we know that we can have two correlated things, two variables, two factors and in correlation and regression only they are believed to be independent as well as dependent on each other at the same time. But in real life there can be so many factors influencing the subject matter of our interest. Which factors? So many. A list can be prepared and some may be out of the list. How to check the effect of all? One way is to check the correlation between the two factors. That means the dependent factor will remain as it is and independent factors we have to change and then we have to study the correlation, regression analysis etc. But at the same time so many factors can be influencing. So a way thought by our seniors is to check the simultaneous effect of all such known as well as unknown factors in the name of time. So in this case, in case of time series analysis, the time is taken as independent variable and the variable or subject matter is taken as dependent on time. Now the question is how to take time as a variable? We know that we can measure the time with different kinds of units from micro or milliseconds to years and so on. Normally in time series analysis, months, quarters, sometimes weeks and most pro popularly year is taken as unit of time and the phenomena is taken as dependent on time. The only problem with this technique is we have to convert the time into independent variable x and this time we are going to learn fitting a linear trend and see I have added some words odd years or odd periods, broadly periods. This is a classification which I would prefer. That's why I am going in that way. First of all we are going to study the cases where there are odd number of years or odd number of periods. Because determination of x is somewhat different in case of odd number of periods and even number of periods. So let's start with odd number of years. See in this case 2010 to 2016 we have 7 years that means odd number 7. And this is the data regarding sales in 1000 units. So we believe that in 2010 the sales was 125,000 units. Because of change in time 2011 the sales is was 120,000 units and so on and in 2016 it was 143,000 units this is or rather these change in sales is because of effect or influence of time we believe that and that's why we are, now we are going to establish a functional relationship a mathematical relationship assuming a linear relationship between these two variables and that relationship functional relationship will, will be helpful to estimate the sales figures of the years of few years rather beyond 2016 let's learn it so as we know these are odd number of years first of all select the middle year as origin this will be the origin now let's say create variable x independent variable based on these time series x is year or period minus origin 
divided by interval. Interval means gap between two periods or two years. In this case, it is one. After 2010, it is 2011, then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So gap of one only. That can be more than one or different from one. So we have to consider interval. X for the year 2010 will be 2010 minus origin 2013 divided by interval 1 in this case. So it is minus 3 divided by 1 minus 3. Similarly, X for 2011 will be 2011 minus origin 2013 divided by interval of 1. So it will be minus 2 by 1 that is minus 2. Since these are the consecutive years, it will be like this. We can find out x for all the years in this way arithmetically and check this. Now we have x. What is y? y is always dependent variable. In our case, sales becomes y and first of all we are going to prepare some other columns and to get the summations of all these summation of y is 945 this must be 0 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 so it is plus 6 minus 6 0 sigma x we need some more columns which columns that I am going to explain as we know that in case of a linear trend the standard form of the equation of dependent variable on the independent variable is y or y cap or y e y c is a plus bx. Remember the linear regression. It is equation of line of regression of y on x. The similar thing is there. But the way of obtaining it is different. y equals to a plus bx. Let's make summation. Where there is variable, the summation is possible. <coughs> but what in case of a constant value? We know that sigma with constant value becomes n. So it will be n a. This is first standard equation, rather normal equation. Sorry, it is known as normal equation. It is obtained by the method of least squares. We need second because we want to find out two constant values a and b. b is nothing. It is like coefficient of regression. It is the slope of the line. <coughs> to derive the second normal equation, we just need to multiply the first normal equation by x. So it will be sigma xy equals to now n is actually sigma but with constant value a it has become n. So it will be now a sigma x because now the sigma has a variable so it will become again the sign of summation plus b sigma square. With the help of these two we can find out a as well as b rather values of a as well as b that means these two are sufficient so far as the linear trend is concerned. So these two are the normal equations of linear trend or straight line relationship between the two variables where time is the independent variable. And as we know that in these two equations there are total four different summations. That means we need these four columns and their summations. We have already two sigma x and sigma y. We need two more sigma xy and sigma x square. Let's find it. xy is nothing x into y. 125 minus 3 minus 375. 128 minus 2 minus 256. 133 minus 1 minus 133. Anything into 0, 0. 140 into 1, 140. 141 into 2, 282. 143 into 3, 429. The summation of the positive is 857, 851 rather, positive and negative is 764. 
So the total comes to 87 sigma xy. We need one more column x square. 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. 14 plus 14, 28 sigma x square. Thus we have all the required columns and their summations. Now substituting the summations in these two normal equations we can have values of A as well as B. First is sigma y equals to Na plus B sigma x. Sigma y is 945, N is 7, B sigma x is 0. So ultimately it is 7A equals to 945 and therefore A is 135. So from the first normal equation we can find out the value of A. And from the second we will be able to find out the value of B. That is sigma xy equals to A sigma x plus B sigma x square. Let us substitute the value sigma xy is 87. A into sigma x 0 plus B into sigma x square 28. Therefore 28 B equals to 87. Therefore B equals to 3.107. Instead of 107 you can take double one also. Rounding off in two decimal places. I leave it to you. Now we have A as well as B. Let us substitute them in the standard form of the <coughs> linear equation. So, now we can say that for this time series data, the linear trend is y over y cap equals to 135 plus 3.107x. The value of b is positive, that means the average rate of change in the phenomena <coughs> is positive that means generally the phenomena increases in general now for what purpose we can use this relationship or this functional relationship if we substitute value of x that means value of time we can have the estimated value of our phenomena that is sales let's <coughs> Find out the estimate for 2017. First of all, value of x for 2017 will be year 2017 minus origin 2013 divided by interval 1. So it is 4. x is 4. So let's substitute y 4, sorry, x equals to 4 in y cap. 135 plus 3.107 into 4 that is 135 plus 12.428 that means y cap for the year 2017 comes to 147.428 as we know that y is sales in 1000 units so estimated sales For 2017 comes to 147,428 units. This is the use of the functional relationship between the two variables. If we substitute all these x values into this relationship, we can have the estimated value of sales quantity for the years which are part of our time series. And they are known as trend values. So what is trend value? Trend value means the estimated value of the dependent variable for the period which is part of our time series. This is now your say, assignment. Find out substituting all these x values into this relationship, the trend values for all these seven years. That's it. Thank you very much.